This video is to explain how to use trigonometry to find a side or an angle in a right angle triangle. So it can only be used in a triangle that has a right angle in it. Um, sometimes instead of calling it trigonometry, people call it SOCATOA. And SOCATOA is the acronym that's used to try and remember the three ratios that you can use. So the SO, S-O-H, stands for sine x equals opposite over hypotenuse. So sine, cos and tan are just three what's called functions, um, which are basically just something you can do to numbers, and you've got a button on your scientific calculator for each of them. So you've got sine, cos, tan. Um, and the CA, C-A-H, it stands for cos x equals A over H. Ta uh, TOA stands for tan x is o, o, um, o over A. So the x in each one of these is always the angle in the triangle that you're using. Um, the O and the A and the H then. Well, if X is the angle, if I was using this triangle up here and I was going to use this angle, you always use one of the two acute angles. You don't use the right angle. So if I was going to use this one, then the hypotenuse of the triangle is always the longest side. So it's, it's the same as Pythagoras. Um, so if you go across from the right angle, that tells you which one's the hypotenuse. So this one's the hypotenuse. Now the O and the A, the opposite and adjacent, they change depending on which angle you're using. So in this triangle, if I was going to use this angle, the O, the opposite, would be opposite to this angle. So you would go straight across from that angle and this would be the opposite. And then the other one, the one beside the angle, would be the adjacent. Um, if, however, I was using this triangle and instead of the bottom angle down here, I was using the top angle, if I'd been told that or if I wanted to work that out, then um, the hypotenuse would still be the same, opposite to the right angle. However, the opposite side would be this one and the adjacent side would be this one. So the O and A change about depending on which angle you're using. So, to solve a trigonometric question, like this example here, find side P, um, first of all, we have to pick the right one to use. So how we do that is, first of all, identify the angle we're going to use. So this angle down here at the bottom um, is the one that we're going to use, because that's what we've been told. Um, so label the sides. So opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. So 13 is the hypotenuse. Opposite the angle you're going to use is called the opposite side and beside the angle you're going to use is called the adjacent. So that's our three sides labelled. Now in each question you're only going to use two of them. So you have to identify which two. So you want to use the one that you know or the ones that you know. So the one we know is 13. So that's the hypotenuse. And the one that we want to know is P down here. So that's the adjacent. So in this question we don't need to use the opposite because we don't want to know it and we don't know it anyway. So A and H then, that tells you which one to pick. So A and H, which one had A and H in it? It was cos. So you write that down. You're going to use cos x equals A over H. Then you substitute in your values. So um, x is the angle, remember. The angle's 24. So we write cos 24 equals A is this side that we're trying to work out. It's called P in our triangle, so let's change it to a P and h is 13. So replace it with 13. Then you've just got one more step. Remember you're trying to work out what p is. Cos 24 is a number. You can type that in the calculator and get a number answer. So that's a number and that's a number. So really this is just an equation that you have to rearrange to find out what p is. So p um, is at the minute on this side is being divided by 13. We don't want to be divided by 13. We want this 13 to move over to this side. And when it moves over, the opposite operation to dividing is add is multiplying. So it has to multiply when it comes onto this side. So we write 13 times cos 24 is going to tell us what P is. And then we type that into the calculator. So 13 times cos 24 equals, um, and we get 11.876. So let's write that down. P equals... 11.87 just keeps on going, no need to write any more than that. And then finally, um, P equals, let's round it to just one decimal place, 11.9, and 
and remember P was the length of this side so the length of this side is going to be in centimeters because that was in centimeters so 11.9 centimeters and that's the question done let's do another one then so in this one here you start each question the same you identify the sides of the triangle there's the right angle opposite the right angle hypotenuse there's the angle we're going to use opposite the angle is the opposite side and then the beside the angle is the adjacent side then identify which two out of the three you want to use so 4.2 we know so we want to use this one adjacent P is what we're trying to find out so we need to use that opposite hypotenuse we don't want to know and we don't know it anyway so cross it out so this one's O and A so if we go back to our trig identities up at the top here O and A was tan so you write down tan x equals O over A and that's how you start the question so tan x equals O over A substitute in the things you know x is the angle so that's 37 equals O which is called P and A which is 4.2 and then you want to know what P is so 4.2 has to come up here and multiply 4.2 times tan 37 will tell us P 4.2 times tan 37 equals 3.16 something so P equals 3.16 dot 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 so show your unrounded answer and then your final answer then is going to be just round it if they don't tell you I just round to one decimal place usually 3.2 and again it's the length of the side which is in centimeters in this triangle so 3.2 centimeters. The other way you can be asked to use trigonometry is instead of finding one of the sides like these two you can be asked to find out the angle so that's what we're going to do in this third example however it's basically you start it exactly the same way and there's just a little bit that's different at the very end so you look at your triangle and you identify your sides there's the right angle straight across from the right angle hypotenuse there's the angle we're trying to find out straight across from it, opposite, beside it, adjacent. Which two are we going to use? Well we know 23 is the hypotenuse so we'll use that. We know 17 is the opposite so use that. We don't know this side so we don't want to use the adjacent. So O and H if you look on your SOHCAHTOA O and H is sine so we want to use sine x equals O over H. So we write that down sine x equals O over H and um, then we substitute in the values so this time X the angle is actually what we're trying to find out so we don't we can't replace it with anything so just keep it as sine X on that side O is 17 and H is 23 now what we're trying to get remember is we're trying to get X equals so what we need to do is we need to move this sine to the other side of the equation when sine moves to the other side just like multiply um, and divide add and subtract sine has an opposite and the opposite that it changes to when it moves the side of the equation is called sine with a wee minus one so you do sine minus one and then put in your fraction you could divide this if you wanted to but it's more accurate to just leave it as a fraction in case it turns out that you have to round it or something so when the sine moves over it changes to sine minus 1 and it's really easy to get sine minus 1 on your calculator if you look at the sine button above it in yellow is written sine minus 1 so all you have to do is press the yellow button which is shift and then sine and it will give you the sine minus 1 on the calculator and then type in your fraction which is 17 over 23 so you can use the fraction button to type it in but it's, a, it's usually easier just to type in 17 divided by 23 because we know fractions mean divide so sine minus 1 of 17 divided by 23 and then press equals and we get 47.657 so let's write that down so x equals 47.65 dot 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 and if we round that to one decimal place we'll get 47.7 now x was the angle remember and angles are measured in degrees so that should have a little degrees on it for the units 
and then you can kind of check does that make sense does that look like it's about 47 degrees well it's obviously an acute angle it does look like it's kind of almost half of 90 so that would be right